Hello, this is Mighty Owl. If you ever had to make change, maybe you had three dimes and you wanted to convert them into 30 pennies because you wanted to buy something for lunch. Dimes are a tenth of a dollar, since there are ten dimes in a dollar. While pennies are one hundredth of a dollar, because there are one hundred pennies in a dollar. By changing dimes into pennies, you convert tenths into hundredths. What do you say we dive in and take a deeper look? Here we have the fraction three tenths and rectangles that represent it. What if we wanted to convert the fraction to hundredths? Well, there are ten tens in one hundred. We can split each of these rectangles into ten parts and that would give us one hundred parts. And what has happened to our shaded part? There were three shaded parts, but now there are thirty shaded parts. Remember, with equivalent fractions, what you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. By splitting the rectangles into ten parts, we essentially multiplied the denominator by ten. And since the denominator was multiplied by ten, the numerator was multiplied by ten as well. And three times ten is thirty. And that's how we've just converted three tenths to thirty hundredths. I like this, let's keep on going. Ooh, look at these fractions. Now which of them is equivalent to seven tenths? Now looking at the denominators for each answer, they are all one hundred. And this means our denominator in the original fraction seven tenths will need to be multiplied by ten. When we repeat that for the numerator, we get seven times ten or seventy. So we are looking for seventy one hundredths. Ah, there it is. All right, try something different. Now here we have an addition problem. Four tenths plus thirteen hundredths. Now before we can add fractions, there's one step that's missing. Exactly. The denominators need to be the same. We need to multiply the tenths by ten to become hundredths. So let's do it. Four times ten is forty. So four tenths is equal to forty hundredths. And now we can add. Forty plus thirteen equals fifty-three. And so the answer is fifty-three hundredths. Woo! All right. Let's check out another problem now. Oh, wow, fun. This one's like a puzzle. Okay, we need to match together fractions so that they have a sum of 45 hundredths. First, we will need to convert all of the tenths in the denominators to become hundredths. Four times ten is forty, so four tenths becomes forty hundredths. Three times ten is thirty, which makes three tenths turn into thirty hundredths. And finally, two times ten is twenty, changing two tenths into twenty hundredths. All right, that's better. Now we can start looking for sums of forty-five by using the numerators. Starting with forty hundredths, five hundredths needs to be added to get it to a sum of forty-five hundredths. And look, our first match. Okay, moving on to fifteen hundredths. Fifteen hundredths plus thirty hundredths will give us a sum of forty-five hundredths. And hey, there we go, our second match. Now we have twenty hundredths, nineteen hundredths, and six hundredths left. Let's see what that sum will give us. Twenty hundredths plus nineteen hundredths is thirty-nine hundredths. Thirty-nine hundredths plus six hundredths is bingo! Forty-five hundredths, our final match. Hey, that one was a little tricky, having three fractions to make the sum. Good thing we're math ninjas. So far we've been converting tenths to become hundredths. But what if we want to write a hundredths as a tenth? Now this can work if the numerator of the hundredths ends in a zero. This is important. So far we multiplied to turn a tenth into a hundredth. Now we need to divide to change a hundredth into a tenth. Divide by what? That's right, ten. A look at the example. Let's change forty hundredths into tenths. Forty divided by ten is four, and one hundred divided by ten is ten. And now we have the fraction four tenths. Ha! <laughs> Look at that. The zero on the end of the numerator and denominator goes away when we divide by ten. Well, that makes things simple. Here we go. Practice time. Convert the fractions to tenths if possible. All right, let's get started. 
part A. The numerator ends in a zero. Yeah, so we can divide by 10. 60 divided by 10 is six. So 60 hundredths will convert to six tenths. Alrighty. Part B has a numerator of 25. Huh, that does not end in a zero, so we can't convert this fraction to tenths. Moving on to part C. Part C has an improper fraction of 130 hundredths. Now, since the numerator ends in a zero, we can convert it to tenths. Let's try that shortcut and just remove the zero on the end of the numerator and the denominator. Boom! Look at that! We have 13 tenths. Hey, what a fabulous job. You are now a mighty master of tenths and hundredths. You were able to see how easy it is to change tenths to hundredths in order to add them up. We even learned a cool shortcut to change hundredths to tenths by crossing off zeros. Great job, and I will see you in the next video lesson.